Steve Bromber. Jeff Simon. And I'm Zeph Ross, no relation, Howard. Thank you. And I'm so it's it's it is good. It's great to see all of you, and, and uh, hopefully now we can start getting some more meetings to where we're all together and not just um, yeah. on Zoom. So to that end, one of the things that uh, Bob and I, when we met to talk about this particular meeting today, is to have a, an outing. And because hi, welcome, Barbara Shapiro. Hi, Barbara Shapiro. Okay. So what, so what we talked about was trying to, um, to to figure out if we could do something in the evening for August so it'll be a little bit cooler, hopefully. And also uh, for the next for the next photography outing, do something with landscapes. So what we were looking at is going over to Loxahatchee. We looked into it and, and uh, if you haven't been over to Loxahatchee, off of 441, it's really a very cool place. And if you just take the road straight to the back of Loxahatchee, there's uh, what looks like a dock there and a place to launch kayaks, but it's also a great place to set up to take pictures of sunsets. And uh, on, on, the, uh, on, on, on our website, there was somebody that took some beautiful pictures of Loxahatchee with some people doing some different things. It was a really nice photo. Yeah. Yes. That was great. And it was, it was really a, a really nice, great photo. So uh, that's what we were talking about doing. And that we're, and we'll send the information to you. But what we were looking at was meeting at 7 o'clock, August 23rd, which is a Tuesday. And the title of it is Sunsets and Silhouettes. Ooh. Right down I the line. That I, one that she did to where right. it looks like she's holding the sun. Right. Like, yeah. Good stuff. So there's some really great things that could come out of it. And I just learned this about literally about 30 minutes ago. At Loxahatchee, there's a, a little uh, room, I guess there's a room or area that you call it, where they have different lectures and things like that. I've never been to it, yeah. but I was told about it. And uh, sometime coming up, very, very soon, there is a well-known photographer. I don't know, I'll get the information. I literally just learned this. Okay. It's gonna be on an invitation, not an invitation basis, but first come, first serve type of thing where you do have to make a reservation for it. So I'll get the information and if you want to attend and see this uh, lecture of this photographer beforehand, could be really nice. I'm going to go and I'll get the information for you on that. But I don't know the date, I don't know the date, I don't know the time. I only know the place. But the rest will come back to that. So hopefully we'll see a lot of people there. It's a great place to go. It's a great place to take sunsets. And uh, it's also a nice place if you bring your camera and you do want to set up a tripod up. Great place to do that. If you want to uh, come and use your iPhone or whatever other type of uh, camera product you have, it's also a great place to do that as well. Question? Yeah, can I be a cheater? I was at today. <laughs> I'm sorry? Oh. Can I be a cheater? I was at today. Because yeah. I had an annual membership to be new. And uh, they have a little um, nurse, uh, nature center there also. Right, that's the area, sure. I think. No, the, yeah, that's where the uh, classroom is. Right. They have, they have pictures. There's some beautiful pictures of the other photographers as well. The nature center, which, which got me was at night, was a, 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 I don't know how they do it, but a, a guy and his grandson or something they turn the lights off and, and they start, he goes into a, some kind of a dissertation dialogue there, talking about all the things that are going on at night. But that would be the task that we do. There's miles and miles and miles of walkthrough and only five minutes away. Yeah. Obviously, when we get together to go, but you know, well, I mean, we meet a little bit earlier. We need to take one trail because I know I go through the trails around there. If we want, because it'd be a good time to shoot anyway, getting closer to the sunset. We'll see. We'll work on some work. Yeah, that's that's a cool thing. Yeah, we just focus on one thing. There's there's amazing trails there. I've taken. I were uh, uh, a, a bike that I use, and I go down those rock trails and everything else. Really, very nice, and it's it'll it'll take.
take you all the way to almost Parkland on one side and at 18 miles or 20 miles past uh, Lake Worth on the other side. So it, it's really far. The dike. Yeah, the dike. Yeah. Okay. So that's only, right now we only have that one set up, but we'll set up others in probably September and October or whenever. We'll try out one a month, right? Yeah, we can. So that's for really And then in terms of the Zoom meetings, the only, so this year, you know, last year we got in a few uh, guest lecturers on Zooms, which we, I thought were pretty good. And everybody, I think, really liked them. Um, we do need, you know, to make sure we have enough funds in the account to do that. So I'm just encouraging anybody, if you know anybody that hasn't renewed, maybe just give them a little nudge to help us and try to renew so we get, get the fund, get the account, that balance back up again because we drew it down a little bit. So, because um, that really depends on, you know, how much we have to spend. So. It's not even that expensive, but you still need money in the bank, so uh, anybody can help with that at all. If you haven't renewed yet, or you don't, you know, if anybody else you know that hasn't, um, so I think it's worthwhile. So with that, we thank you. to it, and if you enjoy this, yeah, please join our, 
they probably have those regular like, like activities. And instead of opening up like them, them to the page, right. they can just email us. Well, then they're going to want to watch it. Well, you'll put it on yeah. the community page. Sure. Oh, okay. okay. So I would just oh, ask Frank okay. if it'd be okay. Yeah, once a month. Okay. Yeah, Who's yeah. really good friends with Frank? Okay. <laughs> we should really share some of those when we have a special outing. Yeah. We should do it on the regular community yeah. page too. That might get a little interest, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Same idea. Just like we, yeah, just like we put out the display, I same mean, pictures can go on. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I've gotten a lot of compliments on my picture. I'm sure you do. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Except for your white man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not, I'm not a, uh, a, club, uh, a club or a group because okay. we have members from outside the organization. Uh, okay. see that join us. But they allowed me to post my fishing pictures in Valencia Bay, they never stopped me, they never said I okay. can't do it. I don't see why this would not make any difference. I don't think you need Frank's permission, because okay. it's part of Valencia Bay. You're right. People Good post point. stuff, as long as it's not political, yes. it doesn't have any right. Right. BS on it, I, I would be shocked if he said no. Like okay. I said, we post our stuff all the time, and they've never said, take it down. All right, let's give it a go. We'll just okay. try it one time and see Did what happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. good. It figures. <laughs> if you want to get to it. Okay. Great idea, thanks. Good. Good input. See how easily, you know, you can, I, 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 you can navigate whichever way you want to go. I'm usually going to agree. <laughs> so the only other thing we talked about with regard to the silhouettes and, and sunsets was to possibly use the uh, photos that we take from there and use that for a new showcase. Yes, yes. Yeah. absolutely. Okay. So, you, you know, you could add another little thing to it and have a little contest. And the women may get a something and maybe you'll get more interest in your society. Just throwing another mm -hmm. thing out there. We may vote mm -hmm. on the community who, who thinks the best and you get whatever. I mean, I'm just throwing stuff out there. Free membership? <laughs> I'll say that's 10 bucks. It doesn't it's, matter. It's in reverse of what we want, but I mean, it. <laughs> that's a great way to go. Well, up rather than ten dollars for two years, <laughs> so we get something. Out. Well, that's a good idea. Or <laughs> make them make them pay you for the for the picture. <laughs> if I get an eight by ten, the rest of us get four by six. <laughs> I think that was it. Where's the bookshelf? What's that? Can you just go to the bookshelf? You mean yeah. display? But, yeah. Oh, it's right out of the door. Yeah, I know. Well, we put a, put a, um, um, a theme together to put in. Right, right. Put the pictures into so the frame. Line. The frame is when you go out there, you just see it. And, they, and every once in a while, we change it depending on okay. if we have an audio that went on. Okay, so it's only the next one for that one. Right. Um, put into the mailbox or no, 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 you just oh, email us the pick good question. You email the picture. Into, this is, this is. You email can, you, can you email a picture to me? Yeah. Okay. That's all. Just the desk. And just then you do 8 by 10 it and you frame it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you we'll just send us a picture out of the camera. Sharon and Mel Willis manage our, and they just take the picture as digital and they print it. And That's a good point. So everybody. Going back to that contest, say the person, the person gets voted. Put it in a frame for them. Oh. Okay. Well, <laughs> here you, you definitely highlight it here. Right, or you showcase them. You can showcase them. That's correct. Yeah, exactly. Dennis, that's great. Thank you. That's why Bob told me. That's why I got it. That's why I got it. Yes. And one more question on that one. Sure. Let's say I had a few pictures. Do they select? Somebody select? Well, yeah, yeah, that's what we usually end up doing that. Yeah, which we send yeah. in a couple of them. We'll but it. if it's digital, it does it. It's no, it's just, just no, I, yeah. send them along but, and then they'll yeah. pick. Because we're just going to put one from each person out there. So. <laughs> we're trying to give everybody an like equal uh, yeah, so one so so per person. It's the old fashioned way. <laughs> All right, good. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get this. So we'll get going. So this is a little bit of a different like topic today than we've ever done. So um, a lot of times we get really technical about settings and apps and you know, how to use your camera and what all the available different ways there are to 
um, to do that. And today I just really want to concentrate on one thing. Because every time I, I, I speak to somebody that feels like they're not really good at photography or they feel like they don't know what to take, what pictures to take, or how to shoot a, a good picture, I, I thought of this concept of, you know, and, and what I hear a lot is, I just don't have an eye for it. I just don't have a photographic eye. I'm not creative. I just, you know, I don't have an eye. And I, I really have to say, I, I, I just think that it's wrong. I think whoever's telling me that is, that's maybe an excuse for not maybe putting a little more time in, trying real hard, because I think we all have a creative side to us that we can develop. Is everybody going to be as creative as everybody else? No, but, but everybody has an eye, and I'm going to, I'm going to get to why I think this and why, what I think we can do to get around that or to work on that. So as I said, many people just don't believe they're creative. They don't have no, I just think it's false. I'm saying, I, the reason why I say that is I went back to pictures recently in my, in my uh, archives because I wanted to put this gallery up in my house. And the gallery was that I decided to put up this black and white, like eight, nine pictures. And I went back and I said, you know, I'm um, talking about with my wife and we said, Let's go back and take all the travel pictures that we ever went, you know, all these trips that we took. And we'll take one from this one, one from that one, and we'll put a gallery together. So we went back and looking, and I said, okay, let's start in the early stages, like 10 years ago, when we first started, you know, traveling abroad or whatever. So we went back, and I said, and she, and I went back to her, and I said, you're not going to believe it, but a lot of my pictures are really bad, really bad. Now, you may not, you know, you have to realize when you look at a picture in the present time, we're looking at what your skill is or level of you know, creativity is at that time. So obviously I've been working on my photography over the last 10 years, but when I went back to those pictures, I thought some of them were really, really bad. And they were, they were terrible. They wouldn't have made any contests, they would have been, they would have been critiqued and, and, and just like panned because they were that bad. But look at my, like the, the sentence that I, that I put in here, I realized how much worse my eye was about 25,000 photos ago, okay? <laughs> so there's a lot in that one sentence there that you have to really take in. You ever hear this thing where you need to spend 10,000 hours to learn a, a new skill and be competent at it and get skillful at it? Well, with photography, I'm, not, I'm putting that number out there, but look at, okay, so I'm gonna give you some quotes from, from some very famous photographers. One of the most famous photographers was Henri Cartier de Bresson. He was a French photographer. I think back in the early 1900s or mid-1900s, he started to really become well-known. And there was a lot of things that he said, and, and they quoted him, um, saying that really make a lot of sense today. So what is, what is the first one I picked? Well, your first 10,000 photographs are yours. So I don't know how many of you ever looked on your phone and how many photographs you have. I have, now, I, last year, I had about 1,000. This year, I have 13,000. So in one year, I put on my, I took 12,000 pictures, you know, on my phone. So what I'm getting at, I, did I like all of them? No, I, a lot of them were terrible. Threw away, out of 13,000, probably threw away 12,950 that I'd say were not really great. So, but the next quote that he gives, I think is really, really the key to this and, and about what an eye really is, okay? So the, I just wanna read it to you and let's take in why I, I highlighted it that in red this little section. It says, photography is, for me, a spontaneous impulse. All right, I mean, just coming from, this is the key, an ever-attentive eye, all right? It doesn't mean an eye he developed. It doesn't mean an eye that you don't have, that we all don't have. We're all looking at things around us all the time. But he's saying, look, you gotta be like, really attentive to really see a shot. You have to be looking for things. You have to be paying attention to your environment at that particular time, to, and that's the eye. That's what the eye is all about. It's like looking at things and recognizing it's true. You know, when we talk about I don't have the eye. No, you get, yeah, you recognize. The more you look, the more you recognize. That's all I can say. The less you look, the less you're gonna recognize. I walked with somebody to Wakoda Hatchi about a month or so ago. A friend of mine, we were both taking pictures. And, you know, he, I'm taking, he's taking, and I, you know, I, I sent him a couple pictures I took the afternoon. And he said, where did you see that? How did you see that? And I said, well, you walk, you're walking right next to me. And I turned around and I said, you see the light over there? It's hitting this tree a certain way. But I just noticed it. Why? Because everything was dark and there was one beam of light coming out. But I was looking at it. 
I was looking there. He was like, you know, walking along, not really paying attention to anything, waiting for what I'm not sure, but he was just, well, something to come to him. It's not going to come to you. You have to go to it. You have to see it. You have to look for it. And if you're not looking at it, looking for it, you won't see it. And it's not like something that's really hard to see because it, it does pop out at you, but it comes from an ever attentive eye, which captures that moment. The next, next, the next thing was that I was listening to. Um, I don't really listen to a lot of interviews uh, from photographers, but this one I did, and he was interviewed. And he, he, the, the thing is, is that he is. He was pretty good at painting too. He was really good painter. So he interviewed him and they said, "Look, we take these pictures. They're great shots. We know you're great. And so, you know, can anybody that is not as good as you become? How do they become better? Can they develop an eye?" And here's a guy that said that the reason why I quoted, "Yes, it can be cultivated," is because a lot of people were proteges of his, and they went out and they watched him or talked to him, and he saw that people would change, that would really get better at it, that they thought they had no talent. And he said, you do have talent, you do have ability, you can see these things, but you have to work at it. You can't, it's just not gonna come to you. And you have to pay attention, you have to look and pay attention. So, next, the next series of quotes I, I took from Ansel Adams, everybody I'm sure probably has heard his name, but um, about just what makes a good photograph. Why, how can you take a good photograph? What do you, what do you have to do to take a good photograph? And the reason I highlighted the one in red was because that's the one that always stuck out in my mind. So it says, a good photograph is knowing where to stand. Okay, so think, look at, this is, just think about a scene. You're on a trip, you have the Taj Mahal in front of you, right? And you go in to take a picture of the Taj Mahal. There's a thousand people standing in one spot, taking that picture. Now if you can stand in the same spot, you're gonna get the same picture, right? So everybody's gonna go home with the same picture, and it's going to look like the postcard or whatever. So where, what do you do if you look around, though? There are people on the periphery. There are people going this way. There are people going that way. There are people bending down. There are people shooting up. There are people shooting from different angles. But they're moving around. They're not standing in one spot. So I'm going to get to why that, what that means and why that helps. Even if you don't know what to look for, you're going to come upon it by accident. Because you're going to, once you start doing all those things and moving in all these places and taking all these shots, you're going to say, my lady, you're going to look at me and say, my God, I didn't even believe I took this shot. And that happens to me a lot. I mean, I'm like, whoa. Because the ones I thought that were good, a lot of times they're not. And then I go back and look at the other ones. And there is a. Gerard. Delray 
place, and, I'm, and, and really, it's not the best picture I've ever taken, but the reason I put it there, yeah. <laughs> right? The reason I put it there, I think Barbara asked me, where were you standing when you took this? Or where did because everybody was standing on one side. And then I went to the other, because I, I said, you know what, it's good, because that side produced some good pictures, and I took a few of them, I said, I'm gonna go to the other side. And I happened to catch these two people looking at the drummer yeah. playing, so it's a story. You know, it's more than just taking a picture of the drummer. It's them appreciating his, his, his music and looking at him, and, you know. But I would have never got that shot because we were taking pictures from behind that cover. Yeah. That's where we were taking it, right? Yeah. So I said, I, I didn't know that when I went there. That's what I'm trying to get at. I had no idea. All I said was try it from a different angle. And then when I went there, I didn't even know that, I, that it looked that pretty decent until afterwards when I looked at it on my, on my computer. I said, you know what, I can't record, I record a decent expression, and I didn't even know it, I had no idea. That's why I'm saying you don't know sometimes when you get a picture. And she was, she was smiling. Right, exactly. So the story, that, and I'll get into that, about a story that a photograph tells, you know? And that's what, you, that's what you're trying to do, is, is every picture you take, and I'll get to that in a little bit, has a story, and I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. So how do you photograph a scene? You're there, you're looking at this, there, we watch that particular drummer and band. How do you do it? All right, there's really no way to, that I can tell you to do it. It's just, it, there, nobody knows, nobody, it's not published somewhere that's saying, this is the way you take the picture, and how do you get a good picture? It's, you gotta work at it. So the reason why I'm saying that is that I recently posted this on Facebook, remember this post, where this famous American photographer named Robert Frank took 27,000 photographs in two years. I almost took as many as and then, <laughs> except I didn't even have 83 good ones, but he, but he picked 83, 83 out of 27,000 photographs that made it into this book. So if you think you took enough shots, and you think you got enough you know, angles and, 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 and everything else, just think again, because you probably, you probably have. Um, so what is the story of, of a photograph? What do I mean by that? What, is it, what do they mean when they say that? I mean, it's not me, it's not my word. This is something is like in parlance in, in the photography um, um, industry. And, and so there's a technical side to, to a photograph, right? And that's, you know, all the stuff that you look for and you say this is a good photo because the lighting is good, the color is good. You know, all these things contribute to the shot and to looking at, looking at it and saying that's a good photograph. Sometimes you look at it and you just don't even know why. You just say it's just good. I mean, and a lot of people, and it's not necessary to like, evaluate and rip apart every photo. If you like it, you like it. But there's an impact or emotional side of a photograph. That's the key. So what is it? That's where I really, really try to focus on because the other stuff, you can get photos that look good or look bad because of lighting or this or that. But what does it have an impact? Does it have an emotional impact to you when you take it? So every photo has a story, right? I know it's a, I'm using this word story because I think it's something if you think about it that way, you might think a little bit more by when you look into a picture to say, what is that picture saying, right? What is it saying? Is it saying what I wanted it to say? Is it showing what I wanted it to show when I took the picture? And a lot of times you don't know that when you take it. And you don't, sometimes you don't even know what the story is. You're looking at something and you don't even think, you're not even sure what the story could be. But it does, but every photo has some kind of a story. Whether it's a, a picture of a flower, it's a beautiful flower. It's a story, it's some kind of flower, it's this, you know, it's got these beautiful petals, and that's part of the story of, but it's just a flower, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be a complicated story. It could be a landscape, it could be a sunset. We get how many of these, right? So what is, what is the story there? Whatever it is, whether it's a beautiful sunset, whether it's a beautiful flower, whether it's that scene where that I caught, where the people were looking that way, whatever the story was in the picture, okay, you should really kind of look at your pictures and say, well, did I, did I show that? To, you know, enough. Did I was I able to take a picture that actually communicated that story but not well enough, right? That's the title of the Rod Stewart album. Is it? Every really? picture tells a story. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I, you go. <laughs> I didn't know I forgot about that. So this guy that I, I actually took a course with this guy, his name is Jack Davis, he's a really, really good photographer. And he put out this little bit I did a screenshot while I was uh, doing the course and he kind of like summarize the, the things, but if you look at this, you're gonna say, my God, it looks really complicated and everything. 
But if you break it down to what it is, it's like when you take a shot, think of it this way. You're out there, you take a picture. What actually made you take the picture? Why did you stop to take it? What reason did you stop to take it? Was it a feeling you had? Was it something that looked beautiful? Was it something that was, you know, a happy emotion? Was whatever it is, whatever that is, you you want to, you're not going to think about a lot of these things when you do it, especially in the beginning, because you're going to just be taking a lot of pictures, and that's all you need to do. You can't think of all this. You can't. So the thing is that there was a there was a somebody I was listening to somebody who once give it, um, uh, um, a a uh, little lecture on this, and he was saying, look. When you're taking a picture, it's like swinging a golf club. When you swing the golf club, you shouldn't be thinking about anything. Before you swing the golf club, you're setting up, you're looking at the position your body is in, all this stuff. That's what you're doing with the, with the camera. You're doing that all before. But once you or once you take that shot, you know, you're ready for this, right? You shouldn't be thinking about anything. It should be the swing should be natural. It should be it should be um, uh, an instinct. Uh, just a you just take it. You know, you're not thinking about it. The reason I'm saying that is that a lot of us, and I know I myself, same way, especially when I first started, using these cameras, all right, they're very technical, right? Much, I'm, I know we've talked about a lot of technical stuff, but when you get into these cameras, you have f-stops, you have shutter speeds, you have this thing called ISO, and all this stuff, and you're sitting on here trying to figure this all out, right? And you're not even looking at what you're taking a picture of. You're not even thinking about what the picture is. You're, you're right. thinking about this, and yeah. you keep like what you're looking at, and you're not even seeing anything in front of you. That's and that's really and it stops you from actually seeing what you should be looking at. You're looking at this, and you're like, oh wait, I got that, and then you know, oh no, I didn't get the focus right. I didn't get this yes. right. Yes, and then you get disgusted and don't even want to take any pictures. <laughs> and that's why at the end, and I'm jumping way ahead. <laughs> I'm going to say if that should, if you are, if you can relate to that. Put this on the side for a while and just start taking pictures with your phone because, but don't think of it as a, as a phone camera. Think of it as a regular camera. Think about getting good pictures with your regular camera, which is your phone camera. So, anyway. Just, or, or just another suggestion. Sure. And, and a lot of people that buy very intricate cameras when they're just starting out or becoming familiar with that particular camera, you can also walk around with a very intricate camera and just put it on a bed. Wow. Wow. It'll take a very, very nice picture. I mean, essentially, you're, to, to a degree, your iPhone also is, is on automatic sure. until you learn more about it. And these cameras will take amazing pictures today on automatic. And then from there, you can go into and say, all right, I'm going to go into aperture mode now. And Bob can talk about what aperture mode is later. So, so the camera still will do a whole lot of things automatically for you. Absolutely. So, so you can still get those pictures and continue to develop this, the skills that you want to have. Sure. So if you look at the last one, I skip to the others, the one, two, and three, and I'm you know, just going to have it play because I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as we get into it. But change your vantage point. Then we talk about where to stand: up, down, left, right, move around. You know, don't stand in one spot. Be, you know, get up, get out. Now, changing camera settings. This is not the concept of what Rob is talking about with, you know, f stops and shutter speeds right now. This is more of, you know, are you going to take a panorama? something that lends itself to a panorama. You look at the scene and say, boy, I wish I could fit more in here. You put, you put it in panorama. You can have a phone where you take multiple pictures if you don't use a phone and you can stitch them together, whatever it is. But think about what it is that you're trying to accomplish and what's the story in front of you. And I'll get into that a little bit to show you some examples. So is it, is it obvious? You know, when you, not always. But, you know, sometimes, you, you, sometimes it is, like a beautiful sunset. Other times, it, it's only when you start taking shots that you can start to realize, well, what is it that I want to shoot? So I put up an example here. So I don't want to, So this bird was a cormorant at, the, I think it was Green Canyon. It was sitting there, didn't move. It was great because I felt like I could even use my phone. Usually I'm taking long lenses and trying to get close. He's sitting right there, not moving, just sitting there, doesn't even know I'm there, and I'm like really close. 
And then I started to shoot pictures from different angles. I said, I didn't even know what I wanted to shoot to begin with. I had no idea. I just said, you know what? Let me just keep shooting. So if you look, I have, I, I have about 20, not this is only I picked out four, showing you I went from the back. I went, I went from, yeah, probably. <laughs> maybe 50. <laughs> maybe I'm gonna, maybe. How much did you pay the model? All right, 100. <laughs> so if you look, I went to the side, I cropped them off a little bit, talk about cropping in a minute, and then I went and I got into the funny head position, and then I got, I thought it was a pretty good one. It was the, the fifth one on the left side and the bottom right. Because it was a little unusual angle. You could still see his eye a little bit. Yeah. You get him from behind. There was nothing distracting in the scene. That feather you know, one is really cool. And then I got like really up close and I just said, I'm gonna do like an abstract, or almost an abstract. But one thing led to the other until I finally realized, let me try close. So whenever you're taking a shot of anything, the one thing you should always think about is that you heard the term wide angle. Wide angle means Whites, wide, open up the camera even on the phone. It's out 0.5 or 1x on an iPhone, which is a certain focal length, whatever. It's wide. You look through it and you can see more in front of you. The more, the more of a telephoto you have, the less you see, the closer it is to you. So you have to look at it and you say to yourself, okay, whenever you go to a scene, this is what I do. I don't take just one length. I don't take well, one phone. It's great. I have to change lenses. I, or I, if I don't have a zoom, that. But what I'm getting at is shoot wide, shoot narrow, mm -hmm. shoot, never forget to try to go closer. You know, whether you move with your feet or you move with the zoom in the camera. But don't just take one shot. Don't say, oh, I got a landscape, it's wide. There's great stuff inside a landscape sometimes that you don't really see right away. And I'll talk about that in a second. What the guy called it a picture within a picture. Um, but the key is that with all these, there's a hundred of them. That I never, I didn't, thank God I bought, I bought the most memory you can get on the iPhone. I gotta tell you, because it's ridiculous. Because my, I, you know, until, until you look at it later, you don't know sometimes which one you're going to keep. Look at Robert Frank who wrote that book. He took 27,000, I don't know how many hours he spent to figure out which ones he was gonna pick. But uh, the, the, bad, the downside of this, all of this that I'm telling you, you're gonna spend a lot more time looking at pictures. Because you've got to figure out which ones you want to keep. Because you're not going to keep them all, but don't delete them until you look at them. Right? Don't look at a picture after you take it right away and say, nah, it doesn't look that good. Sometimes you can say that and you see a blurry picture and you know you can't recover it, and that's fine. You're going to ditch it. But most of, I, I leave most of my pictures for later because I never know. Sometimes a blurry picture is, um, I forgot, there was another photographer who said, you know, sharpness is a bourgeois concept, meaning that it's, you don't have to have a perfectly sharp photo have a good photo. It could be slightly out of focus in certain areas. Well, the whole thing could be out. Today, they, there's a whole thing called camera movement, intentional camera movement, where the whole thing is out of focus, and they do it on purpose. They move the camera around, it creates a big blur, and they're all loving it. Everybody's loving it. Everybody's loving it. Like, saying, oh, this is the most artistic thing I've ever seen. You know, it's like, so. Ridiculous. <laughs> so, so I talked earlier about this, and I think this is really an important concept. Developing your eye by working the shot. I, mean, I was doing with that camera who let me do it. Thank you, nice guy, nice little bird. Let me stand there for like 10 minutes taking 100 photos. But obviously you're not gonna have that opportunity with the bird the whole time. Uh, but in, in any scene you go to, you do. You have an opportunity to sit there, and again, like I said, try a different angle. Shoot, shoot from down, shoot, did you ever shoot down on something? Straight down. Did you ever just shoot straight up under a tree? You know, do a shoot from an angle and change the angle if you're shooting up or down. Zoom in, zoom out, you know. Don't pinch, don't use the camera, don't, you know, you know that, right? But that ruins the, the um, resolution. So you, you find, you tell your story that you see, what you see in front of you that captivated you, that stopped you, that you want to take a picture of, and you want everybody else to see exactly what you saw and how good it was and how beautiful it was, all right? I, you know, make sure that you try different angles to get that because you don't know what that's going to be. Sometimes, a lot of times, I never, I'll go back. I would say nine out of ten times, I don't know that what the best shots can, was. I'll go back and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll decide later. So this is a shot. This is just the panoramic. I did put this on on the Facebook page. So the reason why I put it here was originally I took this shot. This is say a garden. 
the summer. And I, I, I went here. At first, when I started taking this picture, I didn't even really see this shot. I just was like taking pictures of the, the child in the water and the family on the picnic table from the other side. Then I said, yeah, but I'm missing the boat. Until I figured it out, I went to the other side and felt like this was the best picture. But then I said, you know, I looked at it and I said, not when I was there. So here's the key. Include, I know there's a, there's a, there's, there's a, there are people, professionals, a lot of professional photographers don't crop anything, meaning they don't change anything in the picture. Whatever they get in the camera is what they take. And that's what they publish or use. They don't believe in cropping. So I didn't crop this until after. I don't believe that. I think you crop as much as you want. But if you don't have enough in your picture, sometimes you don't know what you want to include. Now, you can tell different stories in here by, by, by cropping or not cropping. Why did I crop the second one? I didn't like the, the, um, the cars in the back. And then I said, you know what? There's too much here. I was like, I'm, where's my attention going? Is it going to the people on the table? Is it going to the child? Is it going to the boat, to the yachts? And then I said, you know what, let me just crop this in a little bit and see what happens. Now, you might say, well, who's watching this kid? That's okay. That's okay. You know what, a little mystery in a photo, as long as they weren't paying attention to watching. You know, it was okay. So, you know, you don't always have to include everything. And sometimes if you exclude certain things, it makes a better photo. So what did I see here? Okay, so I'm going to show you some things in a minute that I put up on a certain site where, where fine art photographers critique something I did to show you how crazy it could be in terms of how people evaluate photos and what they think is good or bad. This is basically personal preference. Absolutely. Your eye is looking at one thing and saying, I'm going to crop that. Somebody else may look at it and crop something. Excellent else. point. The whole thing is all Excellent point. Preference. Excellent point. And so to me, both of these could have been. Somebody would like the top one better. Someone like the bottom one. Excellent point. But to me, okay, so if I showed, and I'm just going to, this don't, this didn't happen. But I could see these some fine art photographers that are very high level of photographers look at this and say, you know, that second picture, I like the juxtaposition of this girl who's playing the water, and then she's got nothing, she's basically happy, just playing by herself. And look at these toys that these people have in the back there. These big yachts, oh, and what's yeah. they, you know what I mean? So you can start to throw in and interpret whatever you want to do into the story that you want to put in there, okay? And, and that's why you've walked into museums where somebody can look at a picture and they see one thing, right. and another person sees another. So I'm just trying to you know, say to you that you can see a million different things here. And you can just say, oh, okay, it's the Sea of Harbor's Harp, it's the harbor, and that's the end of it, and it looks great. Or all or, the big yachts and then the little or, beach boat. Or, 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 like you're saying, lift it up even further and take the little girl out of the picture. And just take the, just just take that yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here, right. and lose a little water. Right. You still have people on the beach. See. And then you get a little more sunlight. Yeah. 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 And there's nothing wrong with the picture at the top. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm not, you know, I, right. I wasn't putting it to say, put your story right up. Can tell a story differently. Right. You know, that's why I wrote it that way. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but it's a good point, better, though. better or not. Yeah. So you can just show it differently, is what I, I know I'm using the word story, but you know, right. you can show the picture differently. Now, the one thing I didn't like that I didn't think contributed, that if you look on the picture after I edited it, there was a little, I took out the, the little um, railing on the right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I also took out the grass. the grass. There was a little bit of grass oh, in yeah. the middle. So, you know, I mean, you can fine tune any picture whichever way you want. I mean, would it have been a problem if I left that little bit of grass in there? Not really, but right. I'm more, I'm, I'm a little nuts when it comes to that. I know so. that. <laughs> <laughs> you do? So, okay, so, telling a story by working the shot. So, this is an example of what I did. And, but I didn't, but, so what I did was, I, I, we saw this window, it wasn't much of an impressive window. So, it was really, okay, it was a window. It was like short and stuff. It really didn't have much to it. Right, so I kept taking, I took a couple of pictures of it and I just, I don't know, I'm just gonna walk closer to it maybe. And I didn't like the fact that the cars were there on the right. Oh my God, very see, hard to get a shot. It was hard to get a shot of it. So I walked up close to it, just tilted the camera up. Now I know when I did that, that I cut off the, the window arms on the sides. Now there's a, there's a certain rule, or, and remember rules, 
then I had to be followed. But photographers spout these rules that there's a continuation. So you kind of know that you see the other ends, that this ends somewhere. It's not like you're, you can, in your mind, you, can, you realize, okay, that's what I'm trying to justify why I did that. But somebody could argue, I don't like it. I like it. I'd rather have the arms there. Okay. But well, so that, that though, so what I did by just, if you look at what I did, not only did it create a more dramatic like impression of this like, window, which really wasn't very dramatic, but it got rid of the cars, it got rid of the bench in front, it got rid of the water and the trees, and everything else there, and it just focused on the window. The story that I wanted to tell was the window. So it's like you could tell the story of the window, which doesn't look very impression, impressive on the left one. But then what I did was I said, you know, the, cloud, the sky is kind of bland. I took this now to the next to the level, and I went and I used like one of the apps to add some texture to the sky and everything else to give it a little more artistic look. Because I took something that was really wasn't very pretty to begin with, try to make it a little prettier. Well, it ended up being like something like, hey, where is that? I want to go. It's not really not for the window. Go for the apps. I love that. So here's the, here's the thing I was talking about earlier about cropping, the crop or not the crop, right? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but, so what do you, again, I, before I cropped, but do you have to or was it necessary or did you want to? But cropping it can be done while you're taking a picture, right? If I took this camera and I zoomed in, I'm gonna be cropping it or making a smaller version of it. Cropping just means taking away something from the picture, right? So. I can use that by, I can crop it by zooming in, I can crop it by where I'm standing, I can get closer, all these different things, or I can crop it after. So one of the things that I like to like give, tell people, especially in the beginning, is don't crop a lot in camera in the beginning because you don't know what you really want in there. Now, okay, that's not, a, that's not something they would probably teach you, know, they would teach, you know, figure out what you want, make sure what you have, but you can't put that in there, which you don't have. So in the beginning, until you get a better sense of the eye, your eye gets more attuned to it, I think it's always better to leave more in there and take it out later, until you get to a point where you're feeling comfortable doing that. You say, you know what, if you're not saying, boy, if you start saying, boy, I wish I would have taken, included this, then you're probably okay. But if you're taking pictures a lot of times, you say, no, I wish it was a little bit more here, or a little bit more there, whatever, then, you know, um, so sometimes you can't decide what you want to include or not. Again, some photographers don't live that that Rousseau, uh character that takes these pictures. He never cropped a picture. He says that's what he says in his life ever. Anything that he's shown anybody, let's say, that he's never cropped it, never changed it. He always set himself up in a spot and took a picture exactly the way he was going to be, and he left it that way and never changed a thing. Do you believe that? I don't know. What did I say? Is this the page where I said it? I don't know. But you know oh, wait, what? the next page? Okay. But so. you know what? That's very possible because, first of all, he didn't have the benefit of digital. Didn't use right. zooms. Didn't use zooms. He used a 15 millimeter, one fixed can't focal can't even see what you got so you printed it. Our, our, our phones have three lenses on there. I mean, I think they would go crazy. Um, the one thing I wanted to bring about, about him is that he used a term called the decisive moment, okay? And what he did was, he was a street photographer mainly, right? And so he was just capturing things happening in the street, right? And he always thought that there was one moment in time that was the best moment to capture the shot. And I, I think that's probably right. And it, it's also, I think, and that's why I threw this other thing here, is that the great thing about photography is, is that because you capture one moment in time, no one else is going to get that shot exactly the same way that you got it usually. Whether it's a sunset that's going down, whether it's you know a, a child playing or, or some action that you're getting, you're never going to be able to duplicate that. So okay, so this is this is I took this at the zoo. This, I don't know if you remember this shot that I took. Oh. Okay, the reason I put this here was that I took a picture. I took a bunch of pictures of this kid playing and in the zoo, and the first, the only picture that I felt that had any potential, I didn't get the entire, I, the father on the right, if you look, 
The father's taking a picture of him. Yeah. So I like the fact that the water swirled around his face. It yeah. still showed his face. It was cool. But I didn't get him in. And then I said, you know what? I'm just going to crop him out. So, but I said, you know what? I'm a member of this, this photography group with a really fine art. I'm not, they are really beyond anything you can imagine. So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show them both pictures. And I'm going to say, what would you do? Okay. So look what happened. Four different answers. <laughs> okay, from four different photographers. Yeah. One says, it works really to left in a portion of the bed. They said, just leave it that way. The one says, I feel that the hand on the right has such beautiful lighting. I'm like, I didn't see that. I didn't even realize that. And they said, oh, okay. But she said, number two, I'll crop the mom out. Okay, wait. Then the third one says, really one hand to take out the actual. Person. Then the third one says, I like the child's face. It's clearly visible. The water's swirling around him. I'm looking at the image, leave it as it is, it's fine. The fourth one says, I think you should crop both the mom and the dad. <laughs> so here it is, you got four different answers from four different photographers, right? And they're really good for looking at this stuff, they're really good. That's why it's all subjective. It's just, yeah. that's, that's why it's it's totally you were jumping ahead to where I was it's going totally with this, but that's exactly it. it. If you got, you got the point before I got to that, right. that's, that's it. So, so here's an example of Brisson, this, this French photographer, who know. does the decisive moment. Now look at what he did. He was standing on the top of this, just think in your mind how he got this picture. Yeah. He's standing on top of this stairwell. This biker wasn't there when he went up there. But he waited Wait. for something to happen until the decisive moment occurred, and he took the shot when it happened. So he could have been there for, I don't know, five minutes, five hours? I don't know, maybe he had 10 other people walking by that he didn't like. He recorded the motion, the little motion of the of the bike because it was a little blurry, not exactly in focus because it was moving by quickly. Whatever it was, he liked this the best. I like it. I think it's a great shot. So the reason why I showed that was I, we were on we were in Amelia Island, and I took this shot myself. Why, what did I, why did I put it right after his shot? Mine, obviously, no way <laughs> what his shot is. But I borrowed his concept. I stood there on the beach looking at the sunset, saying, there's a nice background, but there's nobody here. It's just the sunset, it wasn't that great, but what if somebody comes by? Well, sure enough, the biker came by, just a, five minutes later, so I took a shot with the biker going by, this decisive moment. Now, what did I do with this? It just for iPhone use, I did this in live mode, because I didn't, I didn't know if I'd get this, the right shot, so I put it in live mode, which takes like a three second video. You know, and I, when I said we're not gonna get too technical, but that's how I, I didn't take it just with a single shot. It was actually a little video. And then I took the frame out of there that I liked best, and I put it in there. Yeah, but that thing is, they're both good photographs in their own way. Like this, the other one was, okay, like the railing is in focus and the coloring is good, but this is, look at the, the, the reflection on the wet sand and the, you know, and you don't usually see a biker on, on the bike right on the water yeah. riding his bike. So there's there's a story here, uh -huh. you know, to it. And again, that's what I was talking about earlier. What's the story here? Well, this guy's biking and he knows at this is like six thirty in the morning, sorry. Wow. I'm talking about yeah. at six thirty in the morning. And he knows that that sand is hard enough that he's riding his bike down there. So he was prepared for this, obviously. Yeah. And I I wasn't I didn't know he was coming and all of a sudden I saw him thought to come and I said, you know what? This could be a shot with him, you know, like that. So think about the backdrop. Think about what, when you take something, you can stand in a spot, if you have a good spot that you're standing in that you like the background, right? Wait for something to happen. Wait for a person to walk by a certain way or people to be in it. Or sometimes the opposite used to be when we used to travel that you don't want people in the shot. And I, it's true, you don't want thousands of people in the shot. So sometimes one or two people in a shot actually makes a shot. That's why I thought that little girl kind of made the shot a little bit to me. But again, mm -hmm. nobody else, somebody else would have said, oh, it's okay if there's a thousand people on that beach. But what I'm getting at is that you wait for the moment, you know, for that moment. There's another example of seeing a picture within a picture. I just went out, I was walking with my brother in Long Beach, and we went out and he was showing me how the Long Beach, the, uh, they have a volleyball national championships there every year. And then they just set it up. And I said, you know, interesting because you know, I see this picture. I want to go a little closer. I see a picture here. And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, I just want to, you know, I didn't see the picture that I cropped after. 
I just thought, oh, I'll take a picture of this. I couldn't get any closer to it. And I couldn't, and the camera, I had it on the, I only had my iPhone with me. I didn't have a very long lens, so I used the longest lens. And that was the closest picture I could get. But I kind of thought in my mind, maybe something along like that whole lineup of, of, and then all of a sudden, the two volleyball players started to get into a certain position and talking, but they weren't that close. And it reminded me of COVID, the little, you know, kind of thing. I just the whole thing, I had this whole thing going in my own mind. But that's, you know, somebody else might not. But I said, so afterwards when I looked at it, I said, you know what, maybe there's a picture in here. And that's when I cropped it to get to that spot. With the yeah. chair on the hill. Cool. <laughs> right, so that's, cool. yeah. that's a lifeguard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so the lifeguard sitting on the chair. That little chair. Yeah. 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 I shot this in, I shot this in, okay, I did take a couple of other pictures with it, wider. I okay. did go, I did. So you almost could have gotten the second shot if you, instead of taking the, the further shot, using the, the other leg. Right, right. Dude, that was with the 3X lens. Yeah, but how about if you use the 2X lens? Well, that's less, that's wider. That would have gotten the first shot. Okay. Yeah, it would have been wider. Okay. Yeah. Which I did do, and then I said, you know what, let me try to get as close as I can, and then I came over. So using the button that says 3x, not this. Yes. Uh, so that's the point, though, because when you do that, you get a better chance to crop it and still get a decent quality picture. Because when you when you pinch the zoom, so I could have done that, but I, first of all, I didn't, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I didn't see that picture. I saw the whole picture. I didn't really see the what I call the picture within the picture. Yeah. I didn't see that right away. So I just took the whole thing. That's why I say it's always better to take the whole thing. And then later, if you look at it and you find that picture within a picture, you could. You might have a great shot inside the shot. You know, I'm not saying it's a great shot. I'm just saying that it's just an example of what you see, might not see right away when you're looking at it. Um, again, you can always crop a photo afterwards, right? Um, and maybe, I don't know, maybe some of the masks didn't crop it, so what? Will anyone really know the difference? And that's what somebody was saying. Well, how do you know if you didn't crop it? So the only thing I would tell you is that, again, when we talk about pinching the zoom, is the quality. Once you start cropping a photo a lot, then you start to enlarge it after. You know, so when you crop it, you're taking away pixels, right? Meaning the photo's made of all these little pixels that are pushed yeah. in together. Once you start cropping it, you remove those, all right? Later on, if you try to expand that photo by looking at it like on a computer screen or on your, on your TV, you're gonna see the pixels. It's not going to look as good. So that's if you look at it on your phone or maybe on a small shot on the screen, it might be okay. But so that's the only thing I would mention if you're going to want to print a big picture of it. It's best not to crop, whether it's before or after. It's best to use the right lens to get it. However, there are a lot of programs and a lot of labs that print today that can actually correct that and really make a really good picture and reestablish what I call the original resolution of the picture. They can just get it back. Um, okay, so we did go fishing. Yeah, yeah I know. We showed you about this. So, so what happened was, I just wanted to put this up as an example, a simple example. Not to get into apps and all this stuff, but what did I do to get the picture to tell the story better? So yeah, obviously, I'm going to tell you what I saw in the picture was my crazy grandson, <laughs> all right, getting up on top of this, this <laughs> platform. He just wants to bread about his It's true. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> good on the But, you know, if you look at it, one of the things that, and it does, may not bother everybody, little things I'm telling you, I'm nuts about some little things. One of the little things that bothered me was that the horizon line was a little crooked. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm not going to tell you. You the are three, a horizon guy. I'm a horizon guy. <laughs> now, you could say, you know what, that's okay. If you're on a boat, it might be crooked. Maybe it's more. And you know what, you can explain away or justify anything. Me, I'm going to correct the horizon.
Christ. <laughs> but that's just me. You just straightened it out. That's what he did. Right. right. It right. does look better, though. Okay, so now what, what, right. the so what, was, what was the story here? What happened with this picture? A lot of the phone guy lives with the phone. It's only one main phone picture. No matter what, when you shoot at a bright air to a bright light, yeah. it'll darken your picture up. That's just the way the phone yeah. and any camera works. Because yeah. it tell, it wants to, it doesn't want you to get the bright light in there. Right. It's distracting. It, it, so instead, it darkens it. So to me, I said, okay, so what's the story? The story is my very excellent fisherman grandson, right, was up on this platform. And I want him to show up better. So I said, you know what, I'm going to brighten him up. So I did a little editing to brighten him up, okay? I did a little, then the last thing I did was, I kept the edges dark, so I did something called a vignette that would put the attention right called? on it. It's called yeah. a vignette. Yeah. It's just a darkening of all the edges. Okay. So a lot of paintings will be that way. A lot of, so I ended up, you know, correcting that. I did a couple other little things, it doesn't really matter, but the point that I'm trying to get to is that it doesn't have to be complicated with apps and everything else. This is just done with the, I took the shadows up on a slider. I mean, in the, and we could always go over that, but that's it wasn't my complicated editing to tell you the story better, you know. And I wanted the spotlight to be on him. But so, you also could see that that picture on the right was a much better picture. Mm -hmm. But so you, when you got done with it, you could you could visually see that with your eye that was a better picture. Because that was not subjective. I mean, basically, that was a better picture. Mm -hmm. But it was just with editing, and it was just and like you said, and I thought and told the story better. What's the story here? He's the highlight of this, of this, right? I wanted the light to be on him. I wanted, I didn't want it to be dark. You know, I wanted him to make sure that he knew he was looking at that. That's the bait fish that he's getting ready to cast. It's a whole story that I know more about it because I was there, but you can kind of get it. So this was, a, this was, a, this was a funny shot because he is, he's so excited about fishing. But what I did here was I couldn't get a good picture, a picture that I like. You know, you see pictures of fishing. They're holding the fish up like this, and it's great, and I have a bunch of those. But I said, I really want something a little bit different. It's just the same. I mean, it's great. I have all those. So I started to take live pictures because he was doing all these like crazy things all day. And I took this as a live photo. The live photo, these are both from the same picture. What happened was in a live photo, you get a video. So if you look at the one on the left, the, the frame in the video was cutting the head of the, and his hand off, right. all right? He was looking up. It was also covering his face a little bit. And you know you can see he was happy, but look at the excitement in the second one, right? And with his hand fully extended, so I took that frame out of the video, out of the live video, okay. and I said, "That's what I wanted." What else did I do? I brightened him up again, right? Right. I darkened the sky. I put you know a little bit or everything around him. There's one other thing I did, which is when you can't when you're using your iPhone or your phone, you use this portrait mode. You know you can blend, you can you get make the background blurred a little bit. So what happens when you're trying to tell a story of, let's say, a portrait or the person, you want to, you don't want the background to be very sharp. Maybe you want to see where he is and what he's doing, where, he's, where, he's, where he is, but you don't really need the background to be sharp. And it also puts more attention on the person by having it blurred out a little bit. So I did blur the background a little bit with one of our apps that I could, didn't shoot in portrait. So with iPhones, you have an option. You can shoot in a portrait mode, which will blur the background. Or you can shoot in live photo mode, which won't blow the background, if you want to get the shot. I said to me, I want to get the shot, I'll worry about the blur later. So there is an app that you can use called Focos, F-O-C-O-S, where you can blur backgrounds later. Even though you didn't take it in portrait mode. Is what you did that after the fact? Because when you showed me... I did the background blur and darkening. That was the app that you showed me the picture. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So I don't remember being like that. Yeah, because I wanted that spotlight on his face, and I wanted the... Because I wanted to tell the story. The story was not the surroundings where we were. The story was him excited about the fish and right. using and getting him the uh, champion of fishing world. You know? And correct me if I'm wrong, by shooting in live mode, you're getting basically multiple frames because that's what it does. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me if I'm shooting and I'm not an expert, obviously, I would be better off in most instances shooting in live mode and then picking out the one that basically looks the best. As opposed to taking one shot and saying, well, okay, that's the way it goes. Does that sound accurate? Yes, yes, because here's what happens is when you press edit on live mode, you, there's an option down below on the bottom left to look at all the frames in there. 
So you can see the video frame by frame. You know, every video right. is a still picture one after the other, right? In movies, right? So you can see each individual frame, and then you can go what they call make it the key photo. So I took one of the ones that he did you know, later on in the in the. Uh, it's something you should. Yes, I'll show you how. I'll show you how it works. I'll pretty, I it's pretty. pretty simple. All the time. It's great all because the this way you don't miss a shot. And that if there's is a how shot, you know, that you want to get for sure. But I'm going to turn off the lights for a second, okay. so you can see these. Just to get back to the okay. to the eye part. Okay. Uh, because, because, thank you. Because one of the things that you're one of the things that you're looking at, we're talking about the eye of the photographer. Mm -hmm. You can you're looking at on a screen because you can see we just changed it. One. The reflection of the light really makes a difference on this particular screen. Uh -huh. But in just looking at the photograph now and looking at the light that's coming on him, Bob could have looked at this. And I know he's on a boat at the time, but he could have looked at it from a multitude of different angles or actually said to his grandson, you know what, turn a certain way mm -hmm. so he can just take that picture to make it kind of... Right, so, so here's the thing. Was this a posed portrait or a candid portrait? It was a candid. Yeah. Obviously, because I put it on my photo, and there are times that I did do that with Robert saying on other photos. We were right. holding the foot fish up and uh, moving around right. to take a better angle. It's really the way right. I try to, when you can manipulate that. But in this one, I was just like, I got to get this. This kid is going crazy on the boat. And I got to get some, I got to capture some of that craziness. And the horizon. And the horizon. Oh, that's an, okay. So if you look at this, what did I do to this? I did correct the horizon. Yeah, I'm nice with that. But, and then I, and then I blurred the background. If you look, it's, you can see the blur. It's hard to see it. But, but it does make him pop out of the picture. Yeah, right. And portraits are great for that. That's why portrait mode is great for that, because it blurs the background, puts your attention. So what's sharp is where your eye comes. What's blurred is where your eye doesn't go. Mm -hmm. So the sharp parts will stick out first. And that's why you want to make sure that whatever you, you want in that picture, so you want something in a picture to be sharp, the thing that you want to emphasize. Now in landscapes, you everything you want to be sharp, right? Because it's the whole scene. So you want to see sharpness throughout. You don't want anything blurred in a landscape shot, unless there's something you're doing it's different and you're moving cameras around. You know, like some crazy. Like if you're going to a mountain, it has to not be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you, there are things that that you want to, see, you know, that just you can think of it. It's kind of makes sense if you're looking at a person and the background is distracting in any way. You don't want that in sharp focus. You want it out of focus. You know, live is how I was able to get that lightning bolt. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you never know what's going to happen. So you can't I push the button fast enough to get the lightning bolt. When I when this took, this was at the end. The picture on the right was at the end of the film strip. It wasn't at the beginning, so I didn't know he was going to do that. You know, I had no idea what he was going to do. He was holding the fish like this to start with. I showed you the whole strip. He started here, and he went here, 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 and then he went like this. And if I would have taken a shot, how would I have missed it? Right. If I didn't have live phone, live mode on, you know. And then there are just simple things. I, I'm always putting in crooked wow. pictures because I want to bring home the point that I hate crooked pictures, but that's just me. Yes, but the horizon made a difference. It really makes a difference. It straightened it out. So here we were in Brooklyn yeah. at this promenade, walking along. And what was the, the, so what did I do here about the story? So the story was obviously this promenade, it, it was framed by these branches. I saw that, you know, and I saw the bridge behind it and wanted to include that. But when I took the picture, Afterwards, it, again, it was so bright out that it made everything dark in the foreground. Oh, yeah. So that, to me, the, pic the the story here was these people who was, you know, just yeah, everybody sitting around talking and some, you know, it's a, and relaxing and on their phone or whatever. Part of the story that I thought was getting blocked up and you really couldn't see them, even the lady in the front. So I thought that took away from my story. The story was not just the background, but how the people were interacting with that and how they were using the promenade. They go hang out, they look at the view, they sit. So I looked at that. So what did I do? I put it into, this was an easy one that whether you have an iPhone or um, um, an Android, and I put it into Snapseed, uh -huh. and one button, H called HDR Escape, uh -huh. fixed this. And it just, I only pressed one button. It brought out, it brought out the, the shadows and made them brighter. It, it, it uh, sharpened the whole picture, because it wasn't that sharp, right? It did all of that, just with one button. And so if you have a picture where you see 
very dark and very bright and you don't see things in it that you want to see, that's a one button fix for it. What did you call that? It's called HDR scape. And it's in the tool section, it's a tool. And you can just, you try and there's several different, they call them like um, pre uh, presets right. inside it. And you just press the different ones, it's right in front of you. It says if you have people in the picture, press this one. If you have, wow. it will even give you a, a hint as to what to use. It's a snap CDF. Uh oh, said so I wasn't going to talk about it. I'm going to get through this quick, but I don't want to get through too late. Always, okay, so always, always use auto adjust first in any, I always find that whenever I take a picture and I go into my editing app, if I don't like what I see, I just try auto. Auto sometimes does it. If it doesn't, you go to a preset, a, a look, and you snap see, whatever, and you can try that, and it's one button, you know, they, they, uh, a one button press that you might be able to get a better picture. And there's different categories for um, whether they're landscape shots or whether they're portraits, and they all have these presets. Why? Because they know that people are looking for a certain look. So, like, give you an example, a portrait preset will put a spotlight on somebody's face. Another one will, will or can not put a whole spotlight on them will be more subdued. One will just go right on. So you can try these all out and see which ones work best. All right. And then, then I, then I'm getting, I don't want to, I know we're going to get um, into here about evaluating our photos. I think we can do that another time. Um, so again, so here's, here's the reason. I think this is an important part of this because Robert brought it up earlier. So the reason I started using my phone as much as possible what I, what I realized was that, you know, I wasn't taking enough pictures because a lot of times I wouldn't have my camera with yeah. me and I just wasn't taking enough. Yeah. So now it's so easy to use. And what I say, auto mode is a breeze, right? I spend more time thinking about what I'm shooting and not about settings as much, right? The qualities of my photo, the photos from your phone, sometimes you can't tell the difference between that and your regular phone. Mm -hmm. So I use this when I need a longer lens and I can't get close enough. But a lot of times I use my phone. So what happened was I started taking uh, so many more pictures than I used to take. And, and that was really, um, and here's what Rob was saying earlier was shoot only in auto, okay, when you're practicing. That's my, my advice to him is that because, and only use your camera phone if you feel like you have a long way to go with this and you're getting stuck with the settings and everything else. You can either use your, your regular, the regular camera on auto which will work a lot of times, or just use your, the, the, your, your phone's camera on auto. Um, and then I'm going to send these out so you can, if you want to read through them more later, so that everybody can get a look at them if you, you want to go over them, right? Um, you can take courses online to get better, you can, but you, the best thing I'm going to tell you is practice and just keep shooting, just keep doing it over and over. Okay? And the closing thought would be that there's a difference between liking a scene you're looking at and then liking the photo you took of it. Think about it. Because you look at a scene, and I see this a lot with a lot of sunset pictures. Everybody says, wow, it's beautiful. It is, and that's great. Accomplish what you wanted, whatever. It's a beautiful shot, I like it, everybody loves it, and it communicates that. So not every photo does that. It represents exactly what you saw when you saw it. And then, so you want to look at it later and say, did it really accomplish what I wanted it to be? Do I really like it? the other thing, just one thing about uh, looking at your own pictures, what you should do. Um, a simple way to analyze a photo. Look, number four, look at it and ask yourself, why do you like it? Why do you like your photo? All right? The more way, the more reasons you like it, the more, the better the photo is because it's you. It's about you liking it. It's also about other people liking it, true, but you're the one who took the photo, it's your photo, and what do you like about it? What is it that you see in it that you like, that you took? What is it that you see in it that you wish were different? And that's how you analyze. And just right now, that's a, the easiest way to do it. And so, but the reason I brought up all these other factors about it was dark, light, was to get you to start thinking that, you know, maybe, I'm, maybe it's not exactly as I saw it. Maybe the camera didn't send, give it back to me because it's 2D or it's, doesn't show the depth, or it doesn't show, it's not sharp enough because I saw it sharper, or I saw it, the sunset look better if it's in, whatever it is that you didn't get out of it or back from it when you took it, then you know that the photo could be improved next time for better and just look through those things. Anyway, that's it. Um,
for some reason, people are like, oh, you used auto, you're not using manual, or oh, you edited that photo, that's not really how it looked. The, the, those are two things that just make me crazy because you, you of course, almost every photo that you see out there unless you're been work, fixed. Yes. Unless you're working for National Geographic, I'm getting up because I'm and I'm walking and talking because my wife I know is waiting for me to go. Okay. Yeah, we all have to go. Okay, but unless you're working for National Geographic, every single photo out there that you see that's a professional photograph has been touched. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they're trying to do is to, to Bob's point is it evokes emotion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you look at that photo that you created and it evokes, and it evokes emotion. It's a great photo. And again, you liked it because it did that. Right. Right. You got what you right. wanted to achieve. So don't forgive me, Bob. Yay. No, no, that was it. I just, I'm glad you guys were saying it. It is great to just see you all over here. What? Let's see if it lasted the whole time. It did. It did.